like, share and subscribe. Introduction. Part 3. How to make your own wine. Stuff as casually as. Today's call for one measly bottle. Nevertheless, one bottle of gin, whiskey or brandy will give. Two bottles of the finished product with a high percentage of alcohol to half the cost of the commercial product. Before going on to the recipes, let me explain that a homemade wine usually has alcohol content of 14%, by volume approximately 24 proof. Such a wine will keep well because this amount of alcohol is usually high enough to destroy souring yeast and the bacteria which causes vinegariness immediately when it comes in contact with them. Thus it will be seen that a nice percentage of alcohol acts as its own preservative. The alcohol content of commercial wines rarely exceeds 20 percent by volume approximately 35 proof. More often they range between 14 percent by volume approximately 24 proof and 19 percent approximately 33 proof, which is a high percentage of alcohol. Clearly, then, we could very well dilute the 70 proof gin 40 percent by volume to 35 proof 20 percent by volume by making one bottle into two bottles and still have a very strong slow gin. Whiskey and rum could be similarly treated, while brandy might well be diluted even more owing to its higher spirit content. Bear in mind that it would be unwise to reduce the proof to below 30. The best plan to start with is to make one bottle into two as the recipes advise or make half a bottle into a whole bottle by using half of everything in the recipes. You could make three or four bottles from one bottle of the spirit if you were proposing to use it up fairly quickly such as at a party or over the three-day Christmas. Naturally, we shall be diluting the flavors of the spirits we are using, but we shall be adding the flavors of our choice to counterbalance this. In any case, the commercial spirits mentioned above are rarely drunk meat. Whiskey is usually diluted with water which in my opinion is nigh on a crime, or ginger of soda, while run is often diluted with peppermint or orange cordial. Gin is usually diluted with lemon or orange cordial to make the popular gin and orange, etc. And, in most cases the spirit is diluted to one-third of its volume. Therefore, the proof spirit content of the whiskey and soda or gin and orange served over the bar has been reduced to about 23 proof. The slow gin we shall be making with these recipes will be 35 proof while the cherry brandy will be 40 proof. Bear in this in mind while drinking them. Otherwise you will finish up under the table in double quick time. If you happen to have some homemade slow wine, damson wine, orange wine, cherry wine or some other sort of homemade wine, you may employ one bottle of the spirits to make more than two bottles of cherry brandy, slow gin or whichever you have in mind. This point is covered fully further on in this chapter. The following recipes produces wines which are neither sweet nor dry. If you like a slightly sweet wine increase the amount of sugar by half the given in the recipes. On the other hand, if you like wines drier than average reduce the amount of sugar by half. In the recipes called liqueurs, the amount of sugar should remain as in the recipes. Note, as we shall be using bottles as our means of measuring our materials, bear in mind that a bottle is a bottle, and half a bottle is half a bottle. A bottle the recognized standard wine bottle or the bottles containing spirits hold five gills. This is one gill more than a pint. Many bottles containing imported wines hold one pint, because we shall be making exactly two bottles from one bottle of the spirit we are using. Be sure two of the second bottle you use holds the same amount as the bottle of spirit you're using. If you're using white horse whiskey or booze gin, try to use a similar second bottle. 93. C-H-E-R-R-Y-B-R-A-N-D-Y liqueur. One and a half pounds black cherries, eight ounces white sugar, one bottle. Brandy. Eight blanched almonds. These are usually added, but personal tastes must decide. Wash the cherries and let the drain. Pour the brandy into a four pound kilner jar. These are best. Then stone and halve the cherries carefully and add them to the brandy. Add the almonds if you like them. Screw down tightly and put in a cool, preferably dark, place for six to eight weeks. 
Give the jar a good shaking twice a week. Strain and squeeze and put the liquid into a smaller jar. Then put away as before and leave to clear. Then pour. Siphon into two wine bottles putting exactly half into each. Then boil the sugar in one pint of water for two minutes. When this is cool, fill the bottles to within one inch of where the cork will reach. Shake well to ensure thorough mixing. Seal and keep for one month. 94. Damson Gin. 1 pound damsons, 3 ounces sugar, 1 bottle gin. Wash, dry, stone and halve the damsons carefully and put them in a 4 pound kilner jar. Sprinkle the sugar over them and then pour in the gin. Screw down tightly and leave in a cool dark place for 3 months or 2 months if you are in a hurry to use the product, giving a good shaking once or twice a week. Strain and squeeze and put the strained damson gin into a smaller jar screw down again and put it away to clear. Then pour carefully or siphon the clear gin off the deposit putting exactly half into two bottles. Then fill the bottles to within one inch of where the corks will reach with boiled water that has cooled naturally. Cork. Hard. Seal and keep for one month. 95. Slow gin. One pound slows, five ounces sugar, one bottle gin. Wash the slows and let them drain. Prick the slows all over with a silver or stainless steel fork or large darning needle and put them in a four pound kilner jar. Sprinkle the sugar over them and then pour in the gin. Screw down tightly and put in a cool dark place for six weeks. Give the gar a good shaking once a week. Strain and squeeze and put the strained slow gin into a smaller jar. Screw down tightly again and put away until clear. Pour carefully or siphon the clear slow gin off the deposit and put exactly half into each of two bottles. Fill the bottles to within one inch of where the corks will reach with boiled water that has cooled naturally. Mix well by shaking, cork seal and keep for one month. 96. Orange whiskey. 4 oranges, 2 lemons, 2 Seville oranges or an extra. Ordinary orange and lemon, 4 ounces sugar, 1 bottle whiskey. Peel the fruits and remove all the white pith. Crush. Well and put the pulp in a 4 pound kilner jar. Grate the rind of one orange not a Seville, avoiding any white pith, and add this to the pulp. Sprinkle in the sugar and pour on the whiskey. Screw down tightly and put the jar in a cool dark place for a week giving it a shake. Every day, strain into another jar and squeeze the screw down again, tightly. Then put it away to clear. Pour or siphon the clear whiskey into bottles, putting exactly half into each. Then fill the bottles to within an inch of where the corks will reach with boiled water that has cooled naturally. Cork hark, seal and keep for at least two months. 97. Orange gin. Six oranges, one lemon, two Seville oranges or an extra. Ordinary orange and lemon, five ounces sugar, one bottle gin. Proceed as for orange whiskey. 98. Fruit liqueurs. There is no need to give separate recipes for each fruit, because the same process may be used for all suitable fresh fruit of your choice. The following lists the most suitable fruits for liqueur making and the amounts given. Usually produce sufficient flavor though not enough. Juice to make two bottles of liqueur when using one bottle of brandy. If not enough juice is produced from the amounts of fruit given, make up the amount required. With boiled water, bearing in mind that half a pound of sugar occupies the space of a quarter pint while one pound occupies half a pint space and so on. All these liqueurs will have a spirit content of 40 proof which as we have seen is a high spirit content. As we shall be using spirit of 80 proof, we could make two and a half bottles by using a little more juice a little more water and an ounce or two more sugar and still have a product of 32 proof which is a nice spirit content. If a party time economy is essential, three or even four bottles of a liqueur type wine could be made from one bottle of brandy or say cherry brandy, slow gin or whatever you have in mind, if it were intended to use them up over a weekend or over a three-day Christmas. See making liqueurs from wines and making liqueurs from extracts. One bottle of liqueur may be made by using exactly half the amounts listed below and a little water. Fresh fruit quantity, pound sugar, oz, brandy, 
black currants 141 bottle, red currants 1551 bottle, strawberries 1531 bottle, cherries 241 bottle, raspberries 151 bottle, loganberries 141 bottle, blackberries 151 bottle. Crush the fruit by hand, put in a basin and keep in a berry. Warm place for 12 hours, well covered. Strain carefully, through several thicknesses of fine muslin or other suitable material. Allow to drain rather than squeeze. Put the strained juice into a bottle of the same size as the brandy bottle and fill with boiled water that has been allowed to cool. Mix well by shaking, cork hard and put in a cool place for one hour. By this time a deposit will have formed. Pour the clear juice off this deposit, leaving a little juice rather than allowing any deposit through. The deposit may cause permanent cloudiness if boiled with the clear juice. Put the clear juice in a small unchipped enamel saucepan with sugar and boil gently for two minutes. When cool put exactly half into two bottles of the same size as the brandy bottle. And then fill up with brandy. Add a few drops of boiled water if the liquid does not reach to within one inch of where the corks will reach. Then cork hard and seal after, giving a good shaking to ensure thorough mixing and keep for a month at least. If a film of deposit forms at the bottom of the bottles, decant before serving. Liqueurs and party specials. From homemade wines most of us have stocks of homemade wine and, at party time, or at Christmas, we often wonder how we can turn them into party specials and do so inexpensively. The main question, always is, how much spirit to add to get a given percentage of alcohol. Firstly, and in the ordinary way a well-made wine will not need doctoring of this sort because if fermentation was satisfactory the alcohol content will be in the region of 14% by volume 24 to 26 proof. This is the alcohol content of most commercial wines, indeed some are lower in alcohol than this while others are, of course, higher. Come party time the question is often one of economy how to make that one bottle of scotch or gin or rum go farther without the economy being noticeable. As already mentioned, spirits are hardly drunk meat. Additions of some sort are usually employed, such as ginger, orange or lemon cordial, and these reduce the alcohol content to about a quarter. For those who want to experiment a bit on their own accord, the table shows the relation between alcohol by volume and proof. Spirit and the range covered by this allows for the limits within which they will be working. Those not wishing to start from scratch will find the following guidance useful. Let me begin with whiskey, gin or rum of 70 proof. Wines made with the following fruits are ideal for mixing with gin. Either sweetened or unsweetened damson, sloe, lemon, orange. We have a bottle of one or the other of these wines and a bottle of gin handy. The gin contains 40% alcohol by volume and a bottle of wine 14% mix the two, and you have for the sake of simplicity twice as much of both. Therefore you have 20% by volume the gin, and 7% by volume the wine, total of 27% by volume. To make it simpler, the gin 40% by volume, the wine 14% by volume, 54%. But because the volume amount has been doubled, the alcohol content has been reduced by half 27% by volume. As we can get 54% of alcohol in this way we could use two bottles of wine and one of gin and get three bottles of a product containing 18%. Note, it's important to understand that when two bottles of wine at 14% of alcohol are put together you have twice as much wine still at 14%. But when you do this for the purpose of fortifying, the alcohol in each bottle must be accounted for. Therefore three bottles of wine each containing 14% equals 42%, plus one bottle of gin at 40% equals 82%. Divide this figure by the number of resulting bottles in this case four bottles and each will contain just over 20 percent going further five bottles at 14 percent equals 70 percent one bottle gin at 40 percent total 110 percent in this case six bottles result therefore 110 divided by six equals 18 percent approximately the same would apply when whiskey or rum are used wines more suitable for mixing with whiskey are 
root wines not beetroot. Root wines made with cereals such as wheat, and with raisins or both or with wheat or raisins alone added. Grain wines, those made mainly with wheat or maize, etc. Orange. Dandelion. Wines more suitable for mixing with rum. Root wines with a rather higher than average acid content. Other more acid wines such as rhubarb. Orange. Lemon. Grapefruit. Wines more suitable for mixing with port and other high. Alcohol red wines. Elderberry and all of the red wines whether made from one. Fruit or a mixture of fruits, or mixtures of fruits and grains such as wheat or maize. White wines or the paler color ones made from such fruits as raisins, raspberries, logan berries, red or white currants, etc., may be mixed with the higher alcohol white ports or high alcohol white wines. Note, owing to the lower alcohol content of port as compared with spirits, the mixing should be confined to one bottle of wine to the bottle of port if they are required for keeping. Two to one mixing may be practiced where it is intended to use up the product. Within, say, three or four days, wines for the ladies, preserved, sweet or dry wines of low alcohol content. It's mostly men who want their wines to be knockout drops. And usually they take care to get them as strong as possible. But a high percentage of alcohol is not everything. Many indeed, I would say most continental wines are in the region of 8 to 11 percent of alcohol. Ours, made, with the recipes in this book, will be a good deal stronger than this as has already been explained. It is the ladies, who like the milder flavored, low alcohol, dry to medium dry, or medium dry to sweet wines, so let me explain how any recipe here may be quite easily turned into a wine for the ladies. Mentioned in earlier chapters is the fact that a good percentage of alcohol ensures that wines keep well, and that the lower alcohol wines those under 12% might begin ferment again at any time. This is because a stray yeast spore, either left in the wine or one reaching it at some later stage, will begin to reproduce and live on any sugar present. Only the very driest of low alcohol wines will keep and these must be so dry that no unfermented sugar remains at all. However, not everybody likes bone dry wines. Most people prefer them medium dry to medium sweet or even sweet. The wines made with the recipes in this book will keep well, provided the maximum alcohol has been reached, and if all directions have been followed this will have been achieved. They will keep because they contain enough alcohol to destroy any yeast or bacteria that may reach them. Our aim when making low alcohol wines is to add just enough sugar to make the amount of alcohol required and to allow the wine to ferment right out, and this will do of its own accord. The wine will be dry if less than two and a quarter pounds of sugar are used for one gallon. Now take a look at the short table. This shows the amount of sugar needed to produce the amount of alcohol required in one gallon of wine. If two gallons are being made the amount of sugar required would have to be doubled. Let us suppose we have decided on making a wine of 10% of alcohol. The amount of sugar to add is approximately 1 pound 14 ounces per gallon. Very well then, take any recipe in this book but not those containing dried fruit as these contain quite a lot of sugar. And instead of using the amount of sugar given in that recipe, use 1 pound and 14 ounces instead. As already mentioned, the resulting wine will be bone dry to dry even for those fond of the drier wines. To reduce this dryness we may sweeten to taste either by adding dissolved invert sugar which dissolves quite readily or by dissolving household sugar in some of the wine in the following manner. Care must be taken here to ensure that the wine does not come into contact with metals. One pint of wine from one gallon will do. Put this into a china jug or similar vessel and stand this in a saucepan of water. Add, say, one teaspoonful of sugar for each bottle, one per gallon, six bottles and warm the water until the sugar in the wine is dissolved. Mix this with the bulk and sample. If this is not quite sweet enough, you will know that the may be repeated. If you're using invert sugar, the sugar itself may be dissolved in an enamel sauce pan and the resulting syrup stirred into the wine. Very well, we now have a low alcohol wine with sugar in it. To prevent it fermenting or some later date we may preserve 
it without harming it in any way. Here again, Camden tablets play their part, but if the wine is crystal clear, Camden tablets might cloud it slightly this should settle hour but it would mean that rebottling might be necessary when this had happened. It is better, therefore to use 4 grains of potassium metabisulfite in place of 1 Camden tablet. This should be enough to preserve 1 gallon of wine. Crush the bisulfite crystals, and dissolve them in a little warmed wine and stir this into the bulk immediately after. Sweetening. Make sure the crystals are quite dissolved. I've written that 1 Camden tablet or 4 grains of bisulfite crystals should preserve a gallon of wine and sir. It should, but under exceptional circumstances it might not. One more tablet or four more grains of bisulfite crystals may be added without harmful effects, except that it might give just a hint of flavor to the most delicately flavored wines through it will not affect those with a good all-round flavor. Fortunately, there is a simple test that we may carry out to decide whether a second tablet is needed or not. First, pour a little of the treated wine into a wine glass and bunk down the remainder. Cover the glass with a small piece of cloth and leave in a warm room not a hot place. Overnight or for 8 to 12 hours. Note carefully the color when setting it out again the following morning or compare this sample with a sample freshly drawn from the bulk. If darkening of the sample left overnight has occurred, then an extra tablet is needed. If darkening has not occurred, one tablet four grains metabisulfite has done the job, and you have a low alcohol wine of required dryness or sweetness that will keep well. Up to 450 parts SO2 are allowed by law in million parts. Wine and this is represented by approximately 8 Campton tablets or 32 grains potassium metabisulfite. 2 tablets 8 grains represents just over 100 parts per million so it will be seen that we're not after all using very much. Dry wines finish fermenting sooner than wines of a higher alcoholic content because there is less sugar to be fermented out. This preserving of wines may be carried out with all wines if you wish, whether they be high alcohol wines or not. Sugar potential alcohol pound Oz, percent, 147.6, The above figures refer to the use of household sugar. If invert sugar is being used, it must be borne in mind that this contains some moisture, so that for every pound of household sugar one must use use one and a quarter pounds of invert sugar, so that mistakes do not occur. I've included the amounts of each sugar to use so that you may choose for yourself which to use and know how much of either not both. Invert sugar is usually supplied in tins containing 7 pounds or in blocks by whatever weight is ordered. If weighing this proves awkward, dissolve it and measure it by the pint, bearing in mind that one pint represents two pounds of sugar. Wine from extracts. 41. Cherry brandy wine. Six bottles of cherry brandy extract. Three pounds sugar or three and three quarters. Invert. One gallon. Water, yeast and nutrient. Boil one third of the sugar in one half a gallon of water for two minutes. Allow to cool and pour into the gallon jar. Then add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed a fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then boil another third of the sugar in a further quart of water for two minutes and when cool add this to the rest. Cover again as before or refit the lock and continue to ferment in a warm place for a further 14 days. After this, boil the rest of the sugar in the remaining one quarter of water as before and when cool add the, the rest. Cover again or refit the lock and leave in a cool place until all fermentation has ceased. 42. Vermouth. Italian. 6 bottles of Italian vermouth extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3. 3 quarters of a pound invert, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in a half a gallon of water for 2 minutes. Allow to cool and pour into a gallon jar. Then add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed or fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. The boil another one third of the sugar in a further one quarter of water and when this is cool add it to the rest. Cover again or refit the lock and continue to ferment in a warm place for a further 
14 days. After this, boil the remaining sugar in. The remaining one quarter of water as before, when add to the rest. Cover again or refit the lock and leave in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 43. Vermouth French. 6 bottles of French vermouth extract, 3 and a quarter pounds sugar or 4 pounds invert 1 gallon water, yeast nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in 1 half a gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a gallon jar. Then add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed or fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then boil another 1 to 1. One third of the sugar in a one quarter of water for two minutes. And when cool add this to the rest. Allow to ferment in a warm place for a further 14 days. After this, boil the remaining water and sugar as before. And when cool add to the rest. Cover again or refit the lock and continue to ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 44. Cream of apricot wine. 5 bottles of apricot extract, 3 pounds sugar, or 3 and 3 quarters pounds. Invert. 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in 1 half a gallon of water for 2 minutes. Allow to cool and pour into a gallon jar. Then add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed or fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. The boil another one third of the sugar in a quart of the water for two minutes and when this is cool add it to the rest. Cover again as directed or refit fermentation lock and continue to ferment in a warm place for a further 14 days. After this, boil the rest of the sugar in the remaining water as before and when cool add to the rest cover. Again or refit lock and continue to ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 45. Cream of peach wine. 6 bottles of cream of peach, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters pounds. Invert. 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in 1 half gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a gallon sized glass jar. Then add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed or fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then boil another one third of the sugar in a quart or water and when cool add this to the rest. Cover again as directed or refit the lock and continue to ferment in a warm place for a further 14 days. After this, boil the rest of the sugar in the remaining water as before and when cool add to the rest. Cover again as directed or refit the lock and continue to ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 46. Slow gin wine. 6 bottles of slow gin extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters pound. Invert. 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in a 1 half gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a gallon jar. Then, add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed or fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then boil another one third of the sugar in a one quarter of water as before and when this is cool add to the rest. Cover again or refit lock and continue to ferment in a warm place for a further 14 days. Then boil the rest of the sugar in the remaining water as before and then cool add to the rest. Cover again refit the lock and continue to ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 47. R-A-T-A-F-I-A-W-I-N-E. 6 bottles of ratafia extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters pounds. Invert. 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in a 1 half gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a gallon glass jar. Then add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed or fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. The boil another one third of the sugar in a one quarter of water as before and when this is cool add it to the rest. Cover again or refit lock and continue to ferment in a warm place for a further 14 days. After this, boil the rest of the sugar in the remaining water as before and when cool add to the rest. Cover again as directed or fit fermentation lock and Continue to ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 48. Kirsch wine. 6 bottles of Kirsch extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters pounds. 
Invert. One gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil one third of the sugar in one half a gallon of water for two minutes and when cool pour into a gallon glass jar. Then add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed or fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then boil another one third of the sugar in a one quarter of water as before and when this is cool add it to the rest. Cover as directed or refit lock and continue to ferment in a warm place for a further 14 days. After this, boil the remaining sugar in the rest of the water as before and when cool add to the rest. Cover, again as directed or refit the lock and continue to ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 49. Mirabelle wine. 6 bottles of Mirabelle extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters pounds. Invert. 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in a 1 half gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a gallon glass jar. Then add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed or fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. The boil another one third of the sugar in a one quarter of water as before and when it is cool add to the rest. Cover again or refit the lock and ferment in a warm place for another 14 days. After this, boil the remaining sugar in the rest of the water as before and when cool add to the rest. Cover again as directed or refit the lock and continue to Ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 50. Prunel wine. 6 bottles of Prunel extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters. Invert. 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in 1 half a gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a gallon jar. Then, add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed or fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then boil another one third of the sugar in a one quarter of water as before and when this is cool add it to the rest. Cover again or refit the lock and continue to ferment in a warm place for a further 15 days. After this, boil the remaining sugar in the rest of the water as before and when cool add to the rest. Cover again or refit the lock and continue to ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 51. M-A-R-A-S-Q-U-I-N wine. 6 bottles of Marasquin extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters. Pound invert, 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 quarter of sugar in a 1 half gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into gallon glass jar. Then, pour in the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed or fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then boil another one third of the sugar in a one quarter of water for two minutes and when cool add this to the rest. Cover again or refit lock and continue to ferment in a warm place for another 14 days. After this, boil the remaining sugar in the rest of the water as before and when cool add to the rest. Cover. Again or refit the lock and continue to ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 53. Green Convent Wine. 5 bottles of Green Convent Extract 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters. Pound Invert. 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in 1 half a gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a gallon glass jar. Then add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed or fit fermentation lock and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then boil another one third of the sugar in a one quarter of water as before and when cool add this to the rest. Cover again and continue to ferment for another 14 days. After this, boil the remaining sugar in the rest of the water as before and when cool add to the rest. Cover again and continue to ferment until all fermentation has ceased. 54. Yellow Convent Wine. 5 bottles of Yellow Convent Extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters pounds invert, 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in 1 half a gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a gallon glass jar. Then pour in the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover and ferment for 10 days. Then boil another 1 third of the sugar and when cool add it to the rest. 
Cover again and continue to ferment in a warm place for another 14 days. Then boil the remaining sugar in the rest of the water as before and when cool add to the rest. Cover again and ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 55. R-E-V-E-R-E-N-D-I-N-E-Y. -E 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 6 bottles of Reverendine extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters. Pound invert, 1 gallon water, yeast nutrient. Boil one third of the sugar in one half a gallon of water for two minutes and when cool pour into a gallon glass jar. Then pour in the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then, boil another one third of the sugar as before and when cool add it to the rest. Cover again and continue to ferment in a warm place for a further 14 days. After this, boil the remaining sugar in the rest of the water as before and when cool add it to the rest. Cover, again and continue to ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 56. Red Curacao Wine. 6 bottles of red curacao extract, 3 pounds sugar, or 3 and 3 quarters. Pound invert 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in 1 half a gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a glass jar. Then, add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then, boil another 1 third of the sugar as before and when cool add it to the rest. Cover again and ferment in a warm place for another 14 days. After this, boil the remaining sugar in the rest of the water as before and when cool add it to the rest. Cover, again and continue to ferment until all fermentation has ceased. 57. White Curacao Wine. 6 bottles of white Curacao extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters. Pound L invert 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil one third of the sugar in one half a gallon of water and when this is cool pour into a gallon glass jar. Then, pour in the extract, and add the yeast and nutrient. Cover the jar and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then boil another one third of the sugar in a one quarter of water as before and when cool add to the rest. Cover, again and continue to ferment for another 14 days. After this, boil the remaining sugar in the rest of the water as before and when cool add to the rest. Cover, again and ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 58. K-U-M-M-E-L wine. 6 bottles of Kummel extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters pounds. Invert 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in 1 half a gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a gallon glass bottle, then add the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover and fermentation for 10 days. Then boil another, one third of the sugar in a one quarter of water as before and when this is cool add it to the rest. Cover again and ferment in a warm place for another, 14 days. After this, boil the remaining sugar in the rest of the water as before and when cool add it to the rest. Cover again and continue to ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 59. Danzig wine. 6 bottles of Danzig extract, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters pounds. Invert. 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in 1 half a gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a gallon glass jar. Then pour in the extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then, boil another 1 third of the sugar in a 1 quarter of water. As before and when cool add this to the rest. Cover, again and continue to ferment in a warm place for another 14 days. After this, boil the remaining sugar in the rest of the water as before and when it is cool add it to the rest. Cover again and ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. 60. Eau de Vie Wine. 6 bottles of extract of Eau de Vie, 3 pounds sugar or 3 and 3 quarters. Pound invert, 1 gallon water, yeast and nutrient. Boil 1 third of the sugar in 1 half a gallon of water for 2 minutes and when cool pour into a gallon glass jar. Then add extract, yeast and nutrient. Cover as directed and ferment in a warm place for 10 days. Then boil another 1 third of the sugar in a 1 quarter of water as before and when cool add this to the rest. Cover again and ferment in a warm place for another 14 days. After this, boil the remaining 
sugar in the rest of the water as before and when cool. Add to the rest. Cover again as directed and continue to ferment in a warm place until all fermentation has ceased. Appendix. Suggestions for readers WHO have difficulty obtaining some of the supplies mentioned. Invert sugar. This can be made at home by the reader. If he has difficulty obtaining same, put 8 pounds of ordinary household sugar, white sugar in a suitable pan with 2 pints of water and 1 half ounce of citric acid. Obtainable in drug stores, or use the juice of 4 lemons. Bring slowly to a boil, stirring all the time so that all sugar dissolves. When all sugar is dissolved, allow to boil for half an hour very gently, without stirring or stirring only. Occasionally, allow this to cool somewhat and then make up to exactly one gallon by adding boiled water. You now have invert sugar, the inversion being caused by the acid. To measure, use one pint to each pound sugar called for. In the recipe one pint is equal to one pound sugar. Store in suitable jars, tightly corked. Yeast nutrients. These are blends of chemicals which stimulate yeast reproduction, thereby helping the yeast to make as much alcohol as it's capable of making. There are no actual substitutes. Camden tablets. A substitute is given in the book. 4. Grains of sodium metabisulfite is equivalent to one Camden tablet. Your druggist will probably think 4 grains. Too small an order, so ask him for an order of, say 10 packs of 4 grains each, and use one 4 grain pack for each Camden tablet called for in the recipe. Don't buy by the ounce and try to measure 4 grains yourself. Ribena. If you cannot obtain this, try to substitute black currant syrup instead. However, it's best to use Ribena. Proper containers. Good quality tin or stainless steel. Containers may be used quite safely but don't use vessels specifically not recommended by the author, and don't use galvanized containers. Now make some wine. Terms and conditions. Legal notice. The publisher has strived to be as accurate and complete as possible in the creation of this report, notwithstanding the fact that he does not warrant or represent at any time that the contents within are accurate due to the rapidly changing nature of the internet. While all attempts have been made to verify information provided in this publication, the publisher assumes no responsibility for errors, omissions, or contrary interpretation of the subject matter herein. Any perceived slights of specific persons, peoples, or organizations are unintentional. In practical advice books, like anything else in life, there are no guarantees of income made. Readers are cautioned to reply on their own judgment about their individual circumstances to act accordingly. This book is not intended for use as a source of legal, business, accounting or financial advice. All readers are advised to seek services of competent professionals in legal, business, accounting and finance fields. You are encouraged to print this book for easy reading. Don't leave before you press like button below and subscribe to this channel. As a subscriber you will receive a new notifications every time a new video is uploaded. Good luck. Thank you.